Hi guys and welcome to my second tutorial on how to make the top-down template replicated so ready for multiplayer. So in the previous episode I have set up these three blueprints so we basically have a game mode in the game mode we only specify our character and our top-down controller then on the character we have basically the the normal character from the top-down template and we only use this character to well display our character in the world and also this little script to basically make this cursor to the world so this decal move every single tick according to our mouse position and then we also have our top-down controller in which we make the character move so how this works is that every single tick if we hold left mouse button we check the position of the mouse in the world then we check if we are the server or not if we are the server we give the server our mouse click location and then we move the character to that location of the mouse using a simple move to location script and then if we are not the server so if we are remote we basically we first also give the server our mouse location and then the server will move our character to that location and then we also move our character locally to that location so that basically the client moves and the server moves and then it works in multiplayer now what one of you noted is that this setup is completely not reliable when it comes to a uh, network lag and that is true because basically as soon as you have some lag then this server and this client are going to fight with each other so basically the server always has authority overrides the client and if there's certain lag here so between server and client then you will see that the client will start to jitter because now this location will get corrected by this and they will fight <laughs> So I worked on uh, two different setups that are completely reliable. So if you're looking at this tutorial and you want to go for a completely reliable setup, then this is the way to go. So the first example that I did was a simple example. So I called it top down simple. So for this simple setup, I basically use only two blueprints. I use a game mode blueprint inside of the game mode blueprint. We only specify our character. That's all we do in here. And then we have a simple character class. So if you open up this character class, all I have in here is that as soon as the character is spawned, we make sure that we see our mouse in the world. And then also we have this little jumping script from the third person characters. This guy can actually jump. And I also added a camera boom, which I angled at 60 degrees, so minus 60 degrees. And I made sure that it has no collision. So basically that's all that I did first. And then we have a little event tick, which every tick gets the position of the mouse and we save that to a variable and also every tick we set the cursor to the world decal so that's this little decal i copy pasted that from the top down character example we set that in the world so that we can see where our mouse is and then we have this little event that makes it work in top down so basically if you hold down left mouse button the gate opens and then we add movement input and how we do this and why we do this and why this is reliable is because now that we add movement input and no longer use this move to location function we are now no longer dependent on ai so we don't have any of that complexity and we just simply use this character movement component which is automatically replicated and reliable for multiplayer since it also has some of that good prediction included. So uh, the script that I use here is that I get the current actor location, so the location of your character, and then I get the location of your mouse. Then we use this little function to get the direction from the location, from the actor location to the mouse location. And that's where we add movement input to. And how this setup works is if we test it out. So let's go to the top down simple game mode. We select two players and use the listen server test then we hit new editor pi window now we have our client here on the left and our server on the right so if we hold down the mouse button the server is going to move in the direction of the mouse so as you see we keep adding movement input and this is not a click to move setup so that's the the minus point of this setup uh, so basically you have to hold your mouse to move the character around but you can also jump and there's no difficulty setting this up since this doesn't use any RPCs or any stuff like that. And as you see, the client also works. So this is one setup to get the top-down template to replicate reliably. Now, if this setup is not for you, and if you really want to make a click to move setup, then we need to take a look at my top down reliable setup. This setup consists out of five blueprints and I will explain each and every one and why we need them. 
First, we need to make ourselves a client controller. So just right click, go to blueprint classes and make yourself a player controller and call it client controller or whatever you like to call it. Then we need ourselves a client pawn. This is going to act as our camera in the game. So to get that, you right click, go to blueprint class and select pawn. Make sure that you're a client pawn. Then we are going to make a character class, which we are going to call the server AI character. This character is controlled by the server, by the server AI controller, which is indirectly controlled by the client controller. So to get this character, all you need to do is right click, go to blueprint class, select character and name it server AI character. Then what we need is an AI controller and we call this the server AI controller. This AI controller is what is actually controlling this character on the server. To get this AI controller, you simply right click, go to blueprint class, type in AI controller, and here you will see it pop up. And then inside of your game mode, you need to specify that you are using your client controller as the player controller class and that you're using the client pawn as your default pawn. Now for this AI controller, there's no logic inside of it required at all. Same goes for the server AI character, although you do need to set your character inside of here. So if you open this one up, you have to head over to the viewport and then inside of the mesh, you have to select your mannequin. So select a mannequin and then also make sure that under the animation class, you select third person animation blueprint. So this one, then you have to set the character to the right location. So I use minus 90 and I rotate it minus 90 on the set axis. Now these two classes are completely set up and we won't need to configure anything inside of here anymore. Now we head over to the client pawn and I'll explain how this works. So the client pawn, all it really is, is if we take a look at the viewport, is that it's completely empty. All it really has is a spring arm and the camera, and it also sets our cursor to the world. So to set the cursor to the world, we take this simple example script again from the top-down template. So we basically every tick take the cursor to the world and set its world location and rotation, and this is the script that you need for that. And then we add our little spring arm, which is the top down spring arm. So I set it at a length of a thousand. And then I set it at an angle of minus 55 on the Y axis. Make sure that the collision test is off. Now this blueprint class acts as our eyes in the world. And then the rest of the magic all happens inside of the client controller. So let's open this one up and see how it works. This is all the script that the client controller exists out of. So let's start here on the top left. First thing that I like to do is that I always like to enable my mouse for my client controller. So to do that, you go over to class defaults and you set show mouse cursor to true. Now, when you start the game, you will see your mouse in game. And then we start off with the first event begin play. So this event basically spawns our AI character on the server. So how this works is that you write yourself a little custom event. So type in custom event, you give it a name. I selected to give it server spawn player. And you have to make sure that you run this event on the server and that it's a reliable event. Now, the first thing that we do in this event is that we get all of the actors of the player start class. So if we look in our world, I've set up some player starts. And, and what this script does is that it gets the location of one of these random player starts and we get a copy of that player start. And then I pull the location of that player start. And I use this location to spawn our AI character and also our AI controller. So what we do here is that we spawn an actor from class. So to get that, you right click and you do spawn actor from class. Then the actor that I spawn is my AI character. And where I spawn it is at this location of a random player start. Then at that same location, I also spawn an AI controller and both of them I set to a variable that I save. So to do that, you right click on the return value and you promote it to a variable. Now you have to make sure that this server AI character variable is set to replicate it. Then the last thing that you do is that you make sure that you have a possess node. And what you have is that the AI controller is going to possess the AI character. So to look at it, this controller is possessing this character. Now that our AI character is spawned on the server and that the AI controller is controlling it, we need to move on to the next functionality to make this work. And that is 
a left mouse button event. So if we, with our client controller, click the left mouse button, we are going to first check if we can have if we have a hit event. So if the mouse left mouse button actually hit something, if that is true, then we send this left mouse button location over to the server and execute this server event, which then moves our AI character. So if we take a look at this event, we have set up a custom event. So you type custom event, custom event. I named mine server move server character. It's also reliable and it has an input of the of a vector type, which I call the destination. Then what I do is that on the server, I check whether or not my AI controller is valid. So if my AI controller is properly uh, spawned into the world and whether or not it exists. And if it does exist, then I execute an event called move to location, which you get by right clicking and typing in move to location. And then make sure you don't use simple move to location, but just actually untick this context sensitive and use this one, move to location. Now, all of these settings are standard in here and all you need to, all you need to fill in is the target. So you want to execute this function on the server AI controller that we spawned into the world. And then we also want to give this function the destination that it needs to move to. And the destination, like we see here, is pulled from our client's mouse click location. This moves the character and that's it. Now that the character moves, we also want to basically follow the character. So what I do here is if we untick this, so if we don't have an event tick, let's take a look at how it works now. So we hit play. We see that we have a character here and a character here. If I click, my character's moving. So I am now controlling the server top down character and it has pathfinding enabled. So as you see, it actually moves around these blocks automatically. So this works perfectly fine, but we are not following this character. And that is because we are not this character. We are simply controlling this character, but we are not following it. So to follow the character, what we have set up is this client pawn previously. And you see that this client pawn has a spring arm. Now to visualize this client pawn that we actually control so that we are, I will add a block here. So let's just add a cube. And this represents us in the world. Let's make sure that the cube has no collision. So let's set it to no collision. And let's make it a little bit smaller. So let's do 0.5. Okay, so this is us in the world. So if we hit play again, then we see that here is our characters and here is us in the world. And as you see, we are not moving, only our AI characters on the server are moving. So to get us to move and to follow our character, we need the following script. So head back to your client controller. So basically what we do every single tick, we get the location of our controlled pawn. So our cube in the world. And then we also get the location of the server AI character. And then we interpolate from the current location to the target location, which is the location of this AI character. And we do that every single tick with an interp speed of 10, which makes it nice and smooth to follow the character. And then we set the location of our cube, basically of our eyes in the world, every single tick. And this is why this variable needs to be replicated because basically we want to be constantly updated of this actor location. That's why it's important to set this variable over here to replicate it. And if we do that, we can now test it out. So that hits play. Let's hit play. We see that we both have our characters here. Now on the right, the server is nicely following the character. So we are this block here. There's a nice smooth follow of this character. And here's our client. There's also a nice smooth follow of this client in the world. And that's how you properly replicate the top down template without being dependent on lag and being completely server controlled. So now that this works, we can get rid of this cube again, which represents us in the world. So let's go back to the client pawn, remove this cube since we don't need this. Test it out one final time. As you can see, it works. And now also let's test it with four players. So let's click four players, enter to pie window. So as you can see, all of the clients are seeing each other move. And it all works fine. And one more important thing for the top down template to work is that you need to have a navigation mesh. So to get that you type in here, you type in nav mesh bounce volume. And this is necessary for the AI to work and to move in the world. If you click it and actually hit P on your keyboard, 
you will see that this is the field that the AI can move in. So it's really important that if you're playing this in a new map that you make sure that you add a nav mesh bound to your map. Okay, and that concludes the entire setup of the top-down template reliably replicated. If you do want a more simple setup, then I suggest going for this setup. Take a look at how this works. Just take a screenshot and copy it, I would say. And if you want a more advanced setup, then take a look at this setup. Take a screenshot and copy it. That's all for this setup. Goodbye, guys. See you in the next video.